The Tao of Self-Confidence, Episode 95. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of outstanding women finding their inner journey to self-confidence five days a week. Visit our website at thetaoofselfconfidence.com to check out amazing blog articles and our killer resources. Hello friend, welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. I'm your host today, Sheena Yap-Chan, and today I have a special lady on today. She is a fitness professional and she also has an upcoming podcast that's coming out soon, so be on the lookout for that. And she is, you know, a phenomenal lady. She's from Seattle. And without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to Sarah Dean. Sarah, how are you today? Maybe you can fill in a little bit more about yourself to the listeners. Sure. Hi, Sheena. Thanks for having me. So locally in Seattle, I own a fitness studio named Sync or called Sync Fitness. And then online, I have an online community called Fit Healthy Moms, where I work with moms doing fitness things there. And then I'm also preparing to launch my um, podcast, the Selfish Mom Podcast. This, this, it's kind of exciting to say it out loud because I haven't said it out loud many times yet. It's like my new project and it's a passion project. I'm Really, really excited. So that'll be a little bit of a pivot away from uh, an exclusive fitness focus um, and get into a little more information with like empowering moms and also just the crazy things that happen in a mom's life, which I've learned since having my son three years ago. Awesome. Well, I can't wait to check that out. I'm sure it's going to be a hit once it goes on iTunes. So thanks for sharing that. And Sarah, what's your cultural background? So I, I'm of, I'm like a European mutt. Um, I have many, many European ethnicities in, in me, mostly Irish. I'm a redhead and I am like a redhead through and through, like sassy, emotional, a little nutty sometimes, but I also like to have fun. And yeah, so I'm definitely like, I hold my Irish heritage close to my heart. Um, I'm from Seattle. I was raised by a single mom who was also an ex-nun. So I have um, that kind of unique background, which isn't part of my cultural background, but it definitely played that um, background of being raised by a single parent. And then also a mom who just came from a really pretty rigid background was an interesting experience. I'm very positive, I should say. I don't mean that in a creepy, negative way. (laughs) (laughs) That's okay. I mean, I used to go to an all-girl private school that was run by nuns too. And, you know, at first it wasn't... It was challenging, but we all got along in the end. So that's all yeah, that matters. Yeah. yeah, it's funny. Like my mom was not super strict growing up. But when I look at like the structure in our household, there was like, she was just really organized and like very, everything was very routine. And because that's what she did for 17 years, like everything was super routine in her daily life. So it's just kind of an interesting thing to look on, look at now that I have been out of the house for so many years, I can look back and be like, Oh, that's why I do that the way I do. So it's it's fun. Sweet. Well, thanks for sharing that. And Sarah, what would be your favorite self-confidence quote? So I have two and one of them I thought I invented and I recently found out I didn't. (laughs) So the first one is get comfortable being uncomfortable. And that's something I've used for years and I totally thought I invented it. And then I saw it. It's okay. We'll say you didn't invent it. (laughs) Okay. Oh, good, good. Thanks. Um, I saw saw it somewhere else recently and I was like, wait, what? So um, get comfortable being uncomfortable has become a huge mantra of mine as I try new and challenging things and find growth in them. And then my other one that I love and that really helps me when I make this, helps me determine what kind of a decision to make on a daily basis is the thing which scares you and it's, and excites you in equal parts is the thing that you must do. Um, and that really, when I'm like looking at something about, and trying to consider like, do I really want to do this? I don't know. And then I'm, I have to look at like, wait, am I kind of scared and kind of excited? And if I can say yes, then I know that I need to do it. <laughs> I love that. And I totally agree with you. If, if you want to do something that's scary and exciting at the same time, like for me, the podcast was really like, it scared me, but then I was excited and I was like, okay, well, you know, you got to do what you fear anyways. So might as well go through it. Right. Yeah. That's exactly where I'm at with my podcast. Like I'm super excited and definitely there's some nerves in there. So yeah, I completely relate to that. I'm sure you'll do fine. (laughs) (laughs) I'm positive you'll do fine on the podcast. Thank you. Thank you. So Sarah, in your own words, how would you define self-confidence? So for me, define, uh, self-confidence and the definition of that would be being comfortable in the skin you're in, no matter how it looks or it feels um, in different phases of your life. And so that for me, I have a three-year-old, like since becoming a mom, my skin looks a little different than it used to. <laughs> and also owning your space and filling it up. And this is something I've really been focusing on personally in the last few years is not trying to shrink. And that kind of goes back to the being comfortable in the skin that you're in. So 
being comfortable with who you are, no matter where you're at and just embracing like the good, the bad, the ugly. Cause we all have all three of them. So that's for sure. I mean, we gotta, we gotta love ourselves <laughs> flaws and all. I mean, they make us who we are. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I totally agree with you. I know there's days when we look in the mirror, like, Oh my God, <laughs> <You know? laughs> but still, <laughs> right. It's, yeah. it's who we are. We got to love it and accept it. So yes. thanks for sharing that. And, you know, Sarah, in your um, in your life before the, your discovery of self confidence, what was it like? So I've had a number of transformations over the years, and especially being in the fitness industry um, since two thousand three, I, I grew up overweight and had a major transformation um, in my early twenties when I started exercising as like a secret project by myself because I was totally embarrassed about it. So that was a big transformation for me at that time. And then later, I started doing a lot of distance running and triathlons, and that was another big another big um, overcoming a hurdle and feeling more confident in my body. But the one I wanted to share today that's most that's closest to my heart right now is the transformation I've gone through since having my son. So before I had my son, I had started Fit Healthy Moms and it's a was a program, there's multiple programs within in that our website um in our within our community and one of the first pro, uh, programs we put together was called 6 Week Pregnancy Weight Loss and which still exists and people use it and love it and It's a great program. And so that kind of implies that like you can lose all your baby weight and bounce back in six weeks. And in my mind, before I had my son, I was like, yeah, you can totally do that. (laughs) And then I had my son and I had a lot of health issues and I lost baby weight very quickly because I didn't gain a ton of baby weight. But what was interesting is that as I was nursing my son, I gained weight. So I lost a lot of weight really quickly and got almost back down to my pre-pregnancy weight. And then I started gaining weight over the course of trying to nurse my son for six months. Um, in addition to that, I had like major, I had some other, so major bladder issues, which if you're a mom, like some people get uncomfortable when I talk about it, but I've had to talk about it so much that it's not uncomfortable at all to me. So I had bladder issues that prevented me from doing the things I really loved fitness wise. Um, I had, I've had some back issues creep up. I also had numerous infections from nursing. So it was like every day was one step forward, two steps back. And it was just gut wrenching for me. And as someone who marketed themselves as like, you can lose six, you lose all your baby weight in six weeks and like bounce back and have, you know, you can have flat abs no matter how many kids you have. And like, that just was not happening for me. And that was a big bruise to my ego. So I kind of had to get over myself and it was hard. And my business was growing really fast at that time, which was such a blessing, but we had moved into this new facility and I had to be in front of all these new, new members of ours in our Seattle gym. And I constantly was like, oh my gosh, like, how are they going to sign up for this? They're just going to look at me. And like, I am not at my best right now. And I remember like trying to put on like extra coats, like in Seattle, it's acceptable to wear a fleece all the time. So I would just be like more layers of fleece, like hiding under my fleece. And I finally slowly started kind of talking myself out of a lot of the uh, detrimental comments that I was making in my head and, and got some help from my doctor in terms of looking at what was going on with my adrenals and why was I struggling so much and why was I not feeling good and why was I gaining weight through nursing and and then even after nursing I continued to gain weight so putting some of those pieces together and then finding some inspiration actually finding inspiration online shockingly enough was actually a big turning point for me too so yeah that's kind of that was what was going on before I had this last transformation thanks for sharing that and you know I've never gone through pregnancy yet so I wouldn't even know what to say (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but you mentioned that you started following some some women online that was like your yeah. aha moment yeah it was and it happened kind of gradually I it's funny so I have this this quote now that I made up it's I use it as a hashtag but I where I say always be stalking and like I have no qualms about being a full-fledged stalker um when I see someone who's doing something that I really like or that really inspires me or motivates me Like I dig deep and try to figure out like, who is this person? What are they doing? How are they doing it? Why are they doing it? Like, what is it? How is it adding to their life and like improving their life and things like that? So I started following a couple women online. One is, I can't think of her last name right now, but Amber of Go Kaleo, which is K-A-L-E-O. And then Erin Brown, E-R-I-N, Erin Brown. They were, they kind of were, um, they weren't collaborating, but they reposted a number of each other's things on, on social media. And I kind of just started picking up on like both of their messages around the same time and just falling in love with them because they were like speaking the language that I really, really needed to hear when I was in a place of frustration about not being able to get my body back after having my son. And they were just talking about like, you know, loving yourself for where you're at and not being restrictive and not being punitive and not like 
talking to yourself with hate. And um, they both had come from backgrounds of, you know, I think they'd each lost like 100 pounds or more at certain points and then gotten into the fitness industry. Um, So I could relate to like that piece of their life as well. And their message was just so strong and so powerful. And it was profoundly different than the other people in my life at that time who, you know, I had two male business coaches who were just like, yeah, like get a six pack and then take pictures of it and you can sell more products. And I was like, getting a six pack is just not my jam right now. (laughs) So I really had to like take stock of like, who are my influences and who am I going to um, like, who am I going to weed out and who am I going to really look up to right now for courage and confidence. And so I weeded out, I got rid of those coaches. I actually hired a local coach who's a female who's phenomenal. And then I kind of just continued with my cyber stalking of these women. And they led me to other fitness professionals who have this, a similar message. And so um, and the social media space is just, I think it, it does a lot to make or break one's self-esteem. And so I, you know, I took out everything that was all about like six pack abs and lose 10 pounds in 10 days and like all that kind of BS. And I just followed people who were about like getting strong and being powerful and like owning your life and taking up space and those kinds of things. And so now I'm, I'm 10 pounds heavier than when I had my son, but I'm cool with that. And when I see other people question those kinds of things or say like, oh, but you're a trainer, like, shouldn't you be in the best shape of your life all the time? That I realized that like, that's about them. And that's about their ideologies and their insecurities and their perceptions on life. And that doesn't need to be like, if that's their paradigm and their reality, that's one thing, but that doesn't need to be mine. And I'm just so grateful that I found people who really are changing the conversation about um, bodies and how to live in your body and own the space that you take up no matter how much it is. So that has been really powerful for me. Um, and I, yeah, I, having a breakthrough like that was really great because I got to say the, the pressure as a fitness professional to look the part is, can be pretty daunting at times. And especially when you're in those vulnerable times, like after having a child and just like not feeling the love for yourself. So, so that was a big thing for me. Well, thanks for sharing then, you know, just trying to have like the perfect body is like insane, right? So especially, especially when you see magazines, you know, with, with these perfect six, six pack abs and people don't even realize these are all altered, right? Like altered to the point where it doesn't even look like them anymore. So, you know, it's really important just to be happy in your own skin. And I'm glad you were able to do that and be able to, you know, live life, you know, just being happy with where you are at this moment. And you know, that's not an easy thing sometimes, especially for women, because we're always so critical of ourselves, right? It's like, we're never satisfied with anything, right? And it's very socially appropriate to be critical of yourself. Like, it's totally cool. Like, you can beat yourself up in front of your best friends. And they're like, yeah, yeah, like, it's very socially appropriate for women to bash themselves very openly all the time. (laughs) Um, And so in which I would love to see that change. And I think that it is changing um, in the right in some circles. I'm definitely seeing the shift. So yeah, totally. I've I've seen some of it some of it too, which is great. So I'm glad we're shifting into that into <laughs> yeah. that now. So Sarah, you know, to our listeners, um, if they're in their own journey of self confidence, what would be that one tip you would give to them? So um, I go back to my always be stalking, like always be looking for people that are living life the way that you want to live your life. You know, I knew that I didn't want to live my life being surrounded by all male fitness professionals in their 20s and 30s. There was a lot of phenomenal people in that group that I was in at the time and when I had those business coaches, but that wasn't the place that I needed to be in anymore once I had my son. That wasn't a productive and healthy place for me. That's not to say that those were bad people. They're just not like, again, like getting a six pack is not my jam. So when I started looking at who I wanted to be connected to, um, I really did start looking at people who stood for what I stood for and I and modeling their behaviors and like modeling just, you know, modeling their, their words in many ways so that I could start to kind of pivot and change my paradigm, um, which was really, really significant. So I'm not saying go copy someone else's life, but, but find a way that you can model someone else's footprint and it will take on its, you know, it will take on its own personality because you will put yourself into it. But I don't think there's anything wrong with like adopting other people's philosophies for a while as you, formulate your own. And that's definitely part of what I did, like looking at what other people are out, other people out there are doing that really speaks to me. And then as I can get involved in those philosophies, trying to break down, like, what does this mean to me? And how can I define it more clearly for myself and make it something that's just my own? And that's been really, really powerful. And I would encourage other women to do that. You know, people think they don't like women copying other women is there's this sense of competition and weird energy about it. And I don't think that's necessary. I would like to think that we could complement and support each other 
by doing similar things instead of competing with each other. And I know that the people that I'm connecting to and following right now are in that same headspace. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing those tips. And it's true. It's time for women to work together and start, instead of like getting jealous of each other. I mean, you know, yeah. the yeah. more the more we can work together, the better the world would be. So thanks for sharing that. And, you know, Sarah, if our listeners want to get to know a little bit more about you and your services, is there any links or social media profiles we can connect with? Sure. So um, you can find me at Sync Fitness. That's S-Y-N-C, SyncFitness.com. That's my Seattle location. And then online, I'm at, my online community is FitHealthyMoms.com. I have, there's Facebook pages for both of those groups as well, uh, for Sync Fitness and Fit Healthy Moms. Or you can find my personal page at Sarah, no H, Sutherland, as in key for Sutherland, Dean, D-E-A-N. I have a public profile, so you can stalk me there. <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And to our listeners, if you want to connect with Sarah, just head on over to the Tao of selfconfidence.com and search for Sarah's name. Her show notes will pop up along with everything else we talked about. And I just want to thank Sarah for taking the time to share her story. So Sarah, thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me, Sheena. Not a problem. To the listeners, be on the lookout for another new episode of Another Amazing Woman's Journey to Self-Confidence. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye for now. Thank you for connecting with us on the Tao of Self-Confidence. Visit the Tao of Self-Confidence.com for links to everything we chatted about as well as killer resources, gifts, and so much more.